Welcome back guys. I'm going to be answering some questions that you have for me about the welding table and how to maintain it. What happens if you have some weld spatter? What happens if you're getting some rust? How to prevent any of these from happening? And of course the tools to use when you run into those problems. So I've put together a table maintenance package for you and I highly suggest that you guys purchase this if you get a table. Even if you have a normal fixture table that's not mine, I would also suggest this. And it comes with some anti-spatter, some tooling to keep the holes clean, some scrapers, some stones, and some tools. And we're gonna talk about all these in detail, when to use them and why. But let's first get started with what happens with just general use of the table. So this is the tool you're probably gonna be using the most. And I call this the fireball scraper. And it's a stainless steel handle with a tool steel scraper. And this is gonna basically keep your tabletop looking in tip top shape. Its sole purpose is to scrape weld spatter off the table. This angle is to be able to cut the weld spatter out of the hole. And then this 45 degree is to cut the bevel if there's spatter inside. So let's go show you how this works. I'm a little bit sad because I'm gonna sacrifice my surface for the good of the video. I'm gonna to try to get some spatter to stick to this cast iron. It's actually really tricky to do, but I wanna demonstrate on how to handle it if this happens. I have the welder set for spatter and uh, it's not ideal and this is on purpose. So let's see if we can get something to stick. Let's see what we got here. So I purposely have cleaned all the stuff off this surface, anything that might prevent us from, uh, from not being able to run our test. This is worst case scenario. We have some BBs that have stuck to the table. Every welding table is gonna have this problem. I recommend this tool for everybody. All you gotta do is run this blade across the surface. It's constructed with a 90 degree angle so that it won't scratch the surface when you're doing this. It's only gonna remove the BB. And you see how they just pop off? Once the spatter is off, this is a tool steel edge, and I'm just gonna run it over till it continues to cut. And I can hear it, and I just go a different angle, and from there, it's gone. Can't even really feel it. Spatter really didn't do anything. The blade has no damage whatsoever to it, and you're gonna be using this tool a lot. The 45, if there's a weld spatter on the chamfer or inside of the bore of the hole, you're able to take this tool and lay it sideways. This back edge will cut the chamfer. This leading edge will cut the bore, okay? So then you can scrape the spatter out and not damage the hole. So don't run a drill through there. Don't do any of that. This tool's designed to, to take care of you. So even if you have a 5 8 table or a System 28 table, get one of these. It'll help you with table maintenance. The other common problem with the table surface is what I call arc blow. It's where you don't have your ground attached to your work. You have the ground attached to the table. And the arc is gonna leap out of the table and into your work, and it's gonna actually damage the surface. That's probably one of the hardest conditions to take care of. Do not use a grinder. Please, oh please, oh please, oh please, I beg you guys, do not use this flap disc. Do not put it down flat on the table, do not rub it. You guys have purchased the finest welding table in the world. Don't damage it with one of these. Please don't do that, I beg of you. Use this, this is a stone. There's a coarse side and a fine side. This comes in your table maintenance package. And what I like to do is just take some sort of lubricant. And in this case, this is just WD-40. And I just like to spray it on, just one light mist. If this were to happen, there's a raised high spot on the table that the scraper can't scrape off. I start with the course. You just make some circles over the top of it. And you're gonna listen for any weird noises. You're gonna feel it with the stone. And then you're gonna flip it over to the fine. And in this instance, I can't feel any highs. It's nice and smooth. You're just gonna wipe it off. And there you go. There was spatter on the table and no longer. If I close my eyes, I can't feel a thing. That's how you handle the table maintenance when you have weld spatter. The next thing is going to be the hole. The tooling might struggle going in the hole. And that's probably because there's dirt and grime inside of them. That's just natural from actually doing work. Here's a little plastic wire brush. You can do it with your hand to clean the bore. Or I like to put this in a drill and just turn the drill on and just go from hole to hole. And it's something you're gonna have to do periodically, but it makes quick work out of it. Within five or 10 minutes, you can have the whole entire table done or just work on small areas as you see fit. Inside the kit, I've included this anti-spatter. And this is the table's first line of defense. I've tested about 30 different anti-spatters. I've found this Walter E. Weld 4 to be my favorite. I give you a gallon and a spray bottle. Now this spray bottle is pretty neat because you can just pump it up, it's pressurized, pour the fluid inside. And then when you hit the button, the super fine mist comes out. You probably almost couldn't even see that. 
really fine mist, you just mist it over real quick or onto your work or metal and then it's gonna give the table one extra layer of defense. When this dries, it doesn't leave really any residue behind. It's paintable and it smells good. It doesn't rust, it's actually a rust inhibitor inside of here too. And I found it to work pretty good. I like to spray it on and wipe it off. If you accidentally leave it on the table surface, no big deal. It has an adjustable nozzle. So as you turn the nozzle, we can adjust how it sprays. Oh gee, that's a squirt's far. But if we turn it fine, I like the super fine mist. And you spray the table down, wipe it off. First line of defense, use the Walter. Let's talk about rust, blemishes, or cosmetic defects. This is just from neglect. I have actually neglected this table for the past month or so, trying to get it to get yucky for this demonstration. And over here, I've actually stripped the coating off of it. We'll get to that later to try to get some sort of yuck to form on the cast iron. Now, how do you handle something like this? This could be rust. This could just be oils from your hands. This could be slime, grit, or grease. The first thing you could probably wanna do is get this. This is Scotch-Brite and this is a finishing pad. I like the red stuff. And what we don't wanna do is actually remove cast iron. We just wanna get rid of the crud. Now what we can do is rub it just naturally with your hand, it doesn't take anything else, and it just brightens up the surface finish. This will work with rust or anything like that. You see how nice that looks? I just rub it over the top. But I'll do you one better. I like to use this. This is just a nice palm sander, and I like to fold the pads in half and just plunk it down <laughs> right on top. And then I get some sort of lubricant. In this case, we'll use WD-40 because the kerosene inside is gonna strip any goo or yuck off the table surface and just one nice little mist across there. The WD-40 is gonna loosen up any grit or grime. And we're just gonna turn it on and rub it over. It doesn't take very long and you just take a, a rag and you wipe it off. Whew, look at that, that is super shiny. Didn't do any harm to the table surface at all. You can see where I stopped. Man, that is smooth to the touch. That looks really nice. Now, what do we do? The table is basically stripped clean. WD-40 doesn't really last when you spray it on the surface. It evaporates and doesn't allow you any protection. So in my opinion, the best way to prevent the table from getting yucky or rust developing on the top is to use some paste wax. I have done a video on that, on how to prevent rust, and I've tested it on cast iron. This is probably the best bang for your buck. You can use Minwax. This is just some SC Johnson. So I like to just put a little stuff with my fingers here, just like that. And then we're gonna make a nice little pouch. When I squeeze it, I can squeeze the wax through the fibers of the towel. If I were to just put the blob on the table and splotch it, right, if I do that and I try to smear it, we'll see most of it ends up in the holes and you really don't want that. So put it in the rag and now when you just rub this over, it just takes a couple seconds. I can see it applying. I can squirt it out with some pressure on my hand. That means you're not using any excess. Back the other way, just for fun. Let that dry. You won't even know that's on there. That's going to prevent this area from getting rusty. It's actually going to help with the spatter a little bit. It's going to maintain that overall cosmetic beauty that we love about this cast iron table. That's enough to do almost half the table. How often do you need to do this? Well, it just depends on where you live, how much you use the table. Generally, this is probably a one month, maybe every six months, depending on where you live. I don't have a lot of humidity here, so I really don't worry about rust on my table. It's just more of keeping fingerprints down and keeping the general appearance looking good. This is dried for what two minutes and you can't even tell it was on the table it doesn't leave anything behind like i can't even tell it's there there's no sticky residue behind it's dried and it's ready to go so also in the kit i've included these drivers these are hex head drivers they come in 5 16 and this one is a 3 16 and these are the tools you need to be able to take all the fasteners out of the fixtures. You're gonna want to convert some of these over to different shapes or styles, and this is the tools to do that. This will allow you to not damage any threads or over torque just by using the screwdriver. Use this, the 3 16 for the socket headed cap screws, and then this guy for the tack bolts. So as you noticed, on top of the tack bolt, we have the 5 16 socket headed cap screw. And a lot of times you don't need any tools, you just use your fingers, maybe you your have gloves on and you can't really get a good grip on it, well that's when you use the screwdriver. This is gonna make sure you don't over torque the fastener, but it gives you a little bit more control over how tight it is. Because if you over torque this fastener, those three balls that are in the bottom could damage the bottom side of the table. But that's what this is for. Keep your fasteners from getting stripped out by using the right tools. So hopefully that answers some of your questions on table maintenance. It's actually really easy to do, and I hopefully this doesn't scare you away from owning a table like this, but these tools are necessary when you have a precision table. So hopefully you guys find this information useful and I'll see you guys on the next one.